Hello everybody, Michael Denny here from Michael's Gameplays and we are back with the Let's Learn War Thunder type thing. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Hinko HE112. Uh, before we get started, I'm just going to tell you this straight off. There is a lot of big words in here that I am not sure how to pronounce. So if I butchered the word, then it's not my fault, please forgive me for it. Okay, let's just get straight into it. The Heinko HE-112 was a fighter aircraft designed by Walter and Siegfried Gunther. It was one of four aircraft designed to compete for the Luftwaffe's 1933 fighter contract, which was eventually won by the Messerschmitt's BF-109. Small numbers were used for a short time by the Luftwaffe and small runs were completed for several other countries, but less than a hundred were completed in total. It remains one of the least known production fighter designs. The first prototype, HE-112V1, was completed on 1st of September 1935, but as a planned Junkers, a Jumo 210 engine was unavailable. A 95 horsepower Rolls Royce Kestrel Mark II S was fitted. Initial test flights at the factory revealed that drag was much higher than expected and the aircraft was not going to be as fast as originally predicted. The V1 was sent off to be tested by the, oh, here's the first big word, Reich, Reich Sluftfart Ministerium. Min, Okay, like, you just can fucking see the spelling of that as a big ass word. Uh, abbreviated as RLM. Okay, so I'll just go with RLM. Uh, so, yeah, I was tested in December at Traven. Travamundi. Travamundi? Yeah, something like that. That'll also be up on the screen for you to see. I told you the spellings. No, the words are really weird. It's because they're all German. Anyway. The second prototype, V2, was completed on the 16th of November. It had the 640 horsepower Jumo 210C engine and a three-blade three blade propeller, but was otherwise identical to the V1. Meanwhile, the data from the V1 factory flights was studied to discover where the unexpected drag was coming from. The Gunther brothers in, uh, identified the large, thick wings as the main culprit and designed an entirely new, smaller and thinner wing with an elliptical platform. As a stopgap measure, V2 had its wings clipped by 3 foot and 7 inches to allow it to compete with the 109. This made the HE 112 creep over the wing loading requirements and the specifications, but with the 109 way over the limit. It was not seen as a problem and the V2 was sent off for testing. The V3 took to the air in January. Minor changes included a larger radiator, fuselage, spine and vertical stabilisers, but it was otherwise largely the same as the clipped wing V2. Other changes included a single cover over the exhaust ports instead of the more common stack, and it also included modifications to allow the armament to be installed in the cowling. It was expected to join the V2 in testing, but instead was assigned back to Heinkel in early 1937 for tests with rocket propulsion. During a test, the rocket exploded and the aircraft was destroyed, but in an amazing effort, the V3 was rebuilt with several changes, including an enclosed cockpit. Heinkel had expected orders for additional aircraft beyond the initial three prototypes. It was able to respond quickly to the new contract for the 10 Zero series aircraft. The new aircraft would be given the series de designation HE-112A-0. The first of these new versions, V4, was completed in June 1936. It featured the new elliptical wing and a more powerful 210DA engine with a two-speed supercharger that brought the power to 690 horsepower for the takeoff and a smaller tail plane. Well, it also supported two fuselage-mounted 7.92mm MG-17 machine guns. V3 was modified in a similar standard. In July, both V5 and V6 were completed. V5 was identical to V4 with the Jumo 210DA engine. V6, on the other hand, was completed as the pattern aircraft for the A-series production run, and thus included the 210C engine instead of the more powerful but less available DA. The only other change was a modification to the radiator, but this would not appear on the later A-0 series models. The last of the prototype A-0 series was V8, 
which was completed in October. It switched engines entirely and mounted the Daimler Benz DB600 along with a three bladed fully adjustable all metal propeller. The engine was a huge change for the aircraft, producing 960 horsepower for takeoff compared to that of the Jumo 210DA's 690 horsepower. V8 was seen primarily as a test bed for the new engine and more importantly as cooling systems. The DB used a dry liner in the engine that resulted in poor heat flow, so more of the heat was removed by oil as opposed to water, requiring changes to the cooling system. In October 1936, the RLM changed the order for the Zero Series 112s, instructing Heinkel to complete any A-0s already in, under construction, and then to switch the remaining aircraft to an updated design. This gave Heinkel a chance to improve the HE 112, which he did by completely redesigning it into an almost entirely new aircraft called the HE 112B. It is at this point that it became a modern design and could compete head to head with the BF 109. The HE 112B had a completely redesigned and cut down rear fuselage, a new vertical stabiliser and rudder, and a completely enclosed cockpit with a bubble style canopy. The canopy was somewhat more complex than the latter, the, the later bubble designs. Instead of having two pieces with the majority sliding to the rear, the HE-112B's canopy was in three pieces and the middle slid back and over a fixed rear section. Even with the additional framing, the HE-112 still had excellent visibility for its day. Armament was also standardised on the B model with two 7.92mm MG17 machine guns and the sides of the cowling with 500 rounds per gun and two 20mm MG FF cannons in the wings with 60 rounds per gun. For aiming, the cockpit was included with the then modern Revy 3B reflectors gun sight. First order was from the Imperial Japanese Navy who had a requirement for a fast climbing interceptor to deal with the Tupolev F S B bombers over China. After seeing the V9 in flight, they quickly placed an order for 24 112Bs with an option for 48 more. The first four were shipped in December 1937 and another eight in the spring and promises for the rest to arrive in May. Before delivery, the Luftwaffe unexpectedly took over 12 of the aircraft to bolter its forces during the Sudeten Sudetenland Crisis. The aircraft were then returned to Heinko in November, but the Japanese, who were unhappy with the high maintenance workload and lower manoeuvrability compared with fighters like the Mitsubishi AA-5M, refused to accept them this late and Heinko was left holding the aircraft. Now some operational history with the Condor Legion. When it was clear the 112 was losing the contest to the BF-109, Hinkle offered to re-equip V6 with 20mm cannon armaments as an experimental aircraft. She was then broken down and shipped to Spain on 9th of December and assigned to, another big word, Versuchagruppe. Let's try that again. Versuchagruppe. It's up on the screen. Uh, so that 88, a group within the Legion Condor, devoted to testing new aircraft and joined three V-series BF-109s, which were also in testing. Oba Lieutenant Wilhelm Balthaster used it to attack an armoured train in an armoured car. Other pilots flew it, but the engine seized during landing in July and she was written off. For the annexation of Sudetenland, every flight-worthy fighter was pressed into service. The batch of HE-112Bs for the Japanese Navy was taken over, but not used before the end of the crisis and shipped to Japan to fulfil orders. The Japanese reje rejected the HE-112s as a fighter, but took 30 for training duties, and the V-11 with its DB-600AA was used for testing. The Spanish government purchased 12 HE-112Bs, this increased to 19. The HE-112s were to operate as top cover for the Fiat fighters in the opening stages of the Civil War. The Fiat having considerably worse altitude performance, in the event only a single kill was made with the HE-112 as a fighter and it was moved on to ground attack work. During World War II, when Allied forces landed in North Africa, Spanish forces in Morocco intercepted stray aircraft of both Allied and German forces. None of these incidents resulted in any losses. In 1943, the HE-112 of Grupo No. 27, 
attack the tail end of an aircraft of 11 Lockheed P-38s, forcing it down in Algeria after re-entering French territory having crossed into Spanish Morocco. By 1944 the aircraft were largely grounded due to the lack of fuel and maintenance. The Imperial Japanese Navy purchased 12 Heinkel HE-112B-0 fighters which it designated both as a Heinkel A7HE-1 and as the Navy type HE air defence fighter. The Japanese flew the A7HE-1 briefly during the Second Sino-Japanese War but phased it out of service before the attack in Pearl Harbor in December 1941. Assuming it's still to be in Japanese use however, the Allies assigned the reporting name Jerry to the A7HE-1 during World War II. So that was all the information I was able to script, script together, uh, well all the sort of interest and information, the rest was just a load of stuff that even I couldn't be bothered reading so I'm, I'd imagine that the majority of yous wouldn't be bothered hearing about it. Uh, so there was no specs on the particular aircraft that were in the game, that would be the HE-112V5 uh, and the A0 and the B0, so I can't give you any information on that, other than what is in the game, but you could always just check that yourself. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to wrap it up here, because <laughs> that's, that's it. Uh, I'm sorry that there wasn't more information, like more operational history that I could tell you about, like how many kills they all got and stuff like that, it's just this aircraft had very little information on it due to the fact that, that it was pretty unknown at the time uh, and it's been forgot about now mostly. Um, but if you did enjoy the video, give it a thumb up, uh, comment down below to what you want to see next. Uh, some Japanese aircraft would be good, I might do some uh, KIs next. I just need to unlock the majority of them, I think I've got up to the KI-61B um, and I love playing in them, it's just so much fun so I'd imagine it's going to have quite a good story to it but anyway, uh, I'll wrap this up here, so yep subscribe if you haven't already, comment, like, all that good stuff uh, and I will see you all in the next one Great work, man.